What's up guys, JR Riemann back again coming to you from MRB Classic Pro Shop. Today I got a quick tip for you because I got some work to do myself. I got to figure out, I got all these bowling balls sitting around that I've drilled for these reviews and stuff, but I've not actually ever taken the time to figure out what layouts I have in my bag or what layouts all of these balls are because I don't remember what I put on all of them. A lot of them are real similar, but I don't remember them exactly. Um, so I'm going to go through all of these bowling balls, write them down and figure out exactly the layouts and the numbers RG and differential wise uh, and, and how they can match up with my tilt. So I'm gonna show you today how to take a ball that's already been drilled and figure out what the angles are and what the dual angle layout is for you um, as far as, so you can take all of your bowling balls and figure out what all your layouts are and, uh, and then put them together and figure out what kind of a bag you have. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, welcome back, guys. So disclaimer here, it is Saturday, uh, and there's a lot of kids in the building. So there might be some screaming kids going by the door here, uh, so I can't really control the noise as far as that goes. Hopefully not, but we'll see what happens here. But we're going to show you how to find your own layout. Okay, we need to figure out, we have a bunch of bowling balls. Um, we don't even know what layouts are on them for the most part, we don't, or we don't remember. So when we want to write them down, we're going to have to go and find them again. So the two things you absolutely need to know is you have to have your, your positive access point. If you don't know your positive access point, you need to head over to the pro shop or to a bowling center and find it yourself. If you don't know how to find it, uh, search out, you know, a video, my video, somebody's video that shows you how to find your positive access point. It's real simple. And then also I would probably, while you're at it, try to figure out what your tilt is at the same time. There is measurements that you can do to figure that out. I just posted a video on that as well. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is uh, figure out what your span is. I know uh, if you have a tool like this, you can obviously, you can just measure it out. I know that, uh, you know, my um, center of my grip is at two inches. So right here, I kind of already have pre everything pre-marked. This ball hasn't gone down the lanes much, so it's still got the markings on it from when I drilled it for the review. Um, so you're going to find that center. So we're going to draw a center line here from the center of your grip straight down through the switch grip. Okay, we got the center grip. All we're going to do is we're going to draw however the distance is uh, of your positive axis point. We're going to draw it straight over. Okay, so I know I am four and a half. So I'm going to stop at four and a half and make a mark. Okay, and we're going to line this back up straight up and down there. And I'm going to draw a line up and down from there. This, what we're creating right now, is called your VAL, your vertical axis line. Okay, so that is one of the important, um, important uh, lines for figuring out what your angles are. Um, the next thing we're going to do is make that mark one inch up because I am four and a half over and one inch up. Okay, so now we have a mark right there. That's my positive axis point, that little circle. So we draw a straight line from the pin through to the PSA, or the mass bias, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we have that. So in order to find the angles, now we got to put the pencil on your pin back through your positive axis point. Okay, so now we have all our lines drawn back on the ball that we need. Okay, so now we're going to figure out what the first angle is. First angle is based on putting the zero on the pin with the back side of the pro set going through the mass bias and then finding where this marking is. This first marking from the pin through your positive axis shows you what your layout is. So this is about 55 degrees. So this is 55, 55 by... Now we're going to find the pin distance from your positive axis point that you marked to your pin. Okay, this is what determines all that flare, whether your ball's going to flare a bunch or not. This is about, a, we'll call it a 5-inch pin. It's real close to 5 inches, so 55 by 5. Now we got to figure out that third VAL angle. Okay, So now you're going to set the ProSec, the zero, right up on the PSA, or the positive axis point that you have here, and it's going to line back up through your pin. Okay, And then that VAL line you're going to look at where the pin is or where that line crosses at your angle, which is at about 50 degrees. So we know we have 55 by five inches by 50 degrees. So that's how you find your layout for any asymmetrical ball. Now it's actually a little bit easier for symmetrical balls. It doesn't take much because this first number doesn't matter. So what we're gonna pay attention to on most of this is the first number and the third number, okay? They're all important. All three numbers are important, but we're gonna add the two up. So we have 55 and 50. It's about a 105, okay? Um, and, and this is going to, these two numbers determine the type of shape 
that you want to create on a lane. The middle number, which is the distance, the pin distance, or the amount of flare you're going to get, basically determines how much of that shape you're going to get. So it's going to say, it's going to give you, it's either going to hook a little or it's going to hook a lot. The further the pin is, the less flare you're going to get, the less overall shape you're going to get out of this. The, the closer to three and three eighths you get that number, the more overall hook and the more overall shape that you're going to create of this type of shape. So if you know a number, if you know these numbers here and you know that 105, when you add them together, 105 gives you the type of ball motion that you really like to see. Um, then you can start using these numbers and maybe just drilling a couple of balls at four inches, maybe another one at, you know, four and a half inches, another one at five and a half inches, you know, just to, and keep these numbers the same because they're going to create the same similar type of shape for the most part with the core. Um, and now the cover just comes into play, figuring out what you want. So now we've got a symmetrical ball. Okay. So there is no mass bias on this. So that first angle that we talked about doesn't necessarily matter on this. Some people will say it does. They still like to find it. Um, that's up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, but this is actually ends up being a little bit easier. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to draw a center line straight through your mass bias or center line from your grip. You're going to find the grip center line again. Now we know it's two inches. So I'm going to go here and four and a half inches over. Make a mark there and you're going to draw that VAL line again. Okay, now this is the only line that really matters. This and then drawing a straight line from your pin. Oh, we got to make that one inch mark because that's our positive axis. We're going to find that positive axis. So there's the positive axis. We're going to draw that pin, the line from the pin, straight through there. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we need, just need to find the distance and then this third number. So the distance is pretty simple, obviously. We just line it up from the pin there. We're looking at five and a half again. So this ends up being five and a half inches by, now you just line this back up through your pin to find that VAL angle. And we're looking at 65. So this is five and a half by 65 degrees, okay? So now on these ones, the only number that really matters shape-wise is this. So you remember, the closer to 90 degrees you get, the uh, slower, the smoother, the more arky your ball motion is going to get. And the closer to 20 degrees that you are, the more reaction off of the dry you're going to see. So basically this number is going to determine how quick your ball sees the friction. Okay, So we need to figure out uh, what number on symmetrical pieces that you like to see. Now it's always going to depend on the cover stock and all that as well. So, But this gives you an idea. Five and a half inches is your flare, of course, the same thing. Um, this is going to flare a lot less than if I were to go an inch closer and make it four and a half. You're going to see this ball really start to pick up. But I drilled the first one like that with four and a half. This is the second phase too. And remember, I'm not a fan of this ball. I haven't found a way to make it look good in my hands. It might be just one of those balls that just doesn't match up with me. This one was better than the first one. Still not great for me. Still didn't give me, uh, you know, some. I have some solid balls from you know, some other different solid balls that I like a lot better than this one. Um, so I'm going to play around with the surface of this and try to keep it in my bag because everybody loves it. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, that's pretty much what you need to know. Go through, figure out what your layouts are, write them down. As you can see, I've started to do here uh, and keep track of that third number. Like I have, you know, the Halo Vision and the Halo, both at 145 total numbers. I've got the Money Badger at 105, the Phantom at 125. The idle doesn't matter, it's symmetrical, so you're just going to keep that blank. You're just looking at the two numbers. So anyway, that's what we're going for. Hope this helps. If it does, let me know in the comments. If you've got questions or anything, you can always hit me up at bowler, or I'm sorry, better, better bowling fitness at gmail.com. You can shoot me an email. I won't necessarily get to it right away, and if I don't, I'm sorry. Just be patient. I try to eventually get to them. Uh, hopefully, they don't get lost in the wreckage in my email, but... Most times I go back through it and try to get to as many as I can. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Make sure to subscribe. Head over to the Bowler X channel and subscribe over there as you're going to see most of the ball reviews over there. We'll do a little bit more training on this channel and more ball reviews and stuff on that channel. But until next time, I'm out, guys. See you later.